Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I have come to talk about a topic which is almost close to each and every one of our hearts. We often sometimes feel very lonely and we are scared to tell this about this vulnerable side to most of the people we know. I have with me today clinical psychologist Ms. Joyita Shaha. Thank you so much Joyita for joining me today in this uh, video. So as I spoke to most of the people online and the feedback that I have received, I saw many people have concerns about facing loneliness on a regular basis, basis along with being, feeling lonely just, uh, you know, out of some psychological illness. So I want to ask you uh, the difference between being alone and being lonely. I guess most of the people don't even understand that there is a difference between being alone and being lonely. What do you have to say, Mr. Um, if I have to differentiate between being alone and being lonely, being alone is a physical state and being lonely is a psychological state. So being okay. alone is physically there's no one around you. You're all alone. There's nobody. And you can be alone and feel connected with people. And you can be alone and lonely. And you can be in the middle of 100 people and still be lonely. Absolutely. So it doesn't have being lonely doesn't have anything to do with whether you are surrounded by people or you're not surrounded by people. It's a yeah. psychological state. And that psychological state, if this goes on, continues for a long time, can lead to a lot of clinical problems. I do understand that. Yeah, loneliness is something that uh, often creeps up sometimes when you are with a lot of people as well. There is something most of the people don't understand. Loneliness doesn't have to be when you're sitting alone in a room and when you're like all alone somewhere. Loneliness is a, is a state where it's a psychological state, state as uh, Ms. Joyita Shah has said, that um, it is something that you feel, that is something that is inside. Internal loneliness is what she is talking about which has nothing to do with being alone. Some people really enjoy being alone, but some people cannot enjoy being alone and they often feel very anxious and depressed when they are alone. So there's a lot of difference between loneliness and being lonely. My next question to you would be, loneliness in general in itself is a big problem, but what about the loneliness that people are facing during this COVID times? Many people are staying away from their families. Many people are not staying, uh, you know, with the people they love, they are concerned, they are, they are suddenly feeling this loneliness that they never feel before. What do you have to say about that? Uh, as you said, Choiti, a sentence you said earlier that some people enjoy being alone. I was listening to that. So you are very true. Some people enjoy being alone and that's a, again a personality trait. We have introverts who actually enjoy being alone and they are very uncomfortable in the midst of a group. And then there are extroverts who enjoy being in a social gathering and they feel very scared to be alone or lonely yeah. as per se. So exactly. in this today's scenario, loneliness can be divided into two different portions. One is like the pre-pandemic situation. Another is the pandemic situation. In the pandemic situation, we are forced to be staying alone. Some people who are working abroad or working in a different state or at a different place not staying with their parents or not having their partners with them at this point of time staying alone being cooped up alone and not being able to see another face for two and a half months have brought about a spell of loneliness earlier people were not staying alone earlier pre-pandemic phase the complaints that we had was more of loneliness as a psychological state now, due to staying alone, the physical state of staying alone is leading to more of loneliness and that is leading to a lot of anxiety episodes, a lot of depression and panic attacks to people who did not have any psychological problem per se before the pre-pandemic. Those who came under the quote-unquote normal category are coming with clinical problems with us and having a diagnosis of depression and anxiety at this phase. And I have had clients who were maintaining absolutely fine with medication. Their psychotherapy sessions had stopped even. And all of a sudden, they are having these pan panic attacks. And that has been triggered by this staying alone. 
which has triggered a sense of loneliness in them and a survey says a research paper i was going through says that in america 22% of the people are complaining of loneliness due to this pandemic situation so there is no indian study for say at this moment but i think this is a global problem where loneliness is being though we are connected we are connected by the internet but this is the time where we see that there is a lot less of connectedness people are connected due to the social media but they are not feeling connected and they are feeling very lonely which is leading to psychological problems absolutely i do agree with you i think that loneliness is something that you know it often comes with uh, sometimes most of the times it also comes with certain self destructive habits when you feel lonely you start uh, you know trying to escape into different situations which might make you feel less lonely and those uh, those actions might not be in favor of you loneliness does give rise sometimes as i said being alone and loneliness are different and sometimes uh, loneliness can give rise very easily to self destructive habits and habits which are destructive in general and that is also a very big concern of loneliness during these covid times i think a lot of people have suddenly understood that they have got an underlying mental issue a lot of people did not even know that you know these things exist and um, a lot of people did not believe that they can feel a certain level of low but this pandemic has kind of opened all our eyes and have kind of maximized the situation that if if you are completely left alone to yourself and being forced to work from home forced to either live uh, with your family which you are not like you know maybe very comfortable with or live separately from them either of the two cases might arise a lot of problems regarding loneliness and you know feeling destructive or uh, getting into self harming uh, things i feel uh so i also wanted to ask you that uh, do you have any practical solutions to deal with loneliness for the people who are watching this video or uh, they would want to you know they, sometimes we don't know what we what we what what we should do when we are feeling alone but what do you have to say about uh, what we can do practically to to kind of minimize loneliness uh, one case i would like to say so i've been seeing this girl she is in class 11 she's staying with her family with her parents but she complains of loneliness and due to this loneliness she's having these negative thoughts that at the end of the day i don't have any friends like obviously she can't go to school and she doesn't feel connected with her friends and all these problems are there so in certain cases we are as psychologists we are telling people to stay connected with people via the internet by via the social media but this same internet can be a cause for loneliness this girl has, has come up with the problem that she can't study because she can't concentrate on her studies entire day she keeps on scrolling her in her youtube feed then mom i don't want to watch a video and neither do i watch a video but i just aimlessly scroll through the videos and i aimlessly sc scroll through others facebook feed and then i feel everybody has got a better life better job better house like yeah, better you're always everything. comparing they're always comparing with other people yeah doesn't have any friends so this is like when people show their pictures on instagram and social facebook and other social media they show the best they would not show their difficult moments they would not show their struggles they would not show their pain so this little girl she is all in class 11 she feels she is the loneliest creature on earth without any friends and everybody is having a very good time out there this is one thing man has to do stop aimlessly scrolling through social media like use the internet to stay connected use it for video chats use it to like uh, the first thing i did for her was limit setting that is the limit setting of phone calls like either she uses the phone for her online classes or tuitions or else she uses it to call people up she can do video calls and she can do audio calls but she cannot aimlessly scroll through so that is one thing people should stop doing immediately because that has a very bad effect on their psyche they aimlessly look through others feed and compare themselves and then they start that negative cycle of thinking negative thoughts which leads to negative emotions and obviously negative thoughts are negative emotions to
one second we are having a technical difficulty so i was saying when one has negative thoughts and negative emotions the behavior is obviously negative so she was going through a psychological inertia where she did not feel like doing anything and she had like completely her routine has gone for a bonker she woke yeah so we missed out a little bit of part uh, in so there what you discussed setting of the the first and foremost thing to do is limit setting of the social media and then the second thing to do is follow a proper routine like that follows the behavioral activation pattern so you have to sleep eat and exercise in time and exercising of course helps because it releases endorphins the happy endorphins. hormones yeah. is yes, i have spoken in my previous so, videos also yes Yes. So if you're inactive and not doing anything, it makes you feel all the more bad, and you like kind of spiral downwards. And if you're yes. exercising and eating your meals, healthy meals at time, mm. and doing everything at proper time, taking proper rest and sleeping, that makes also your emotional spiral also goes up, and you feel better. So I'm not asking people that you go to bed at nine thirty or ten, but at least manage to go to bed at eleven because the late nights, more late nights you do, more it has effect on your attention, concentration, memory, and at the end of the day, it affects your immunity too. Because nowadays there's this thing of improving your immunity. So Absolutely. the exercise and proper food and proper nutrition and sleep pattern will also improve your immunity and also improve your mental health too and stop you from being lonely also. I also wanted to ask you, what about real communication? Doesn't that help loneliness? If you can, uh, you know, be a little vulnerable and maybe talk to people and realize that that you're not alone and there are other people. That is very good. You. Like even if you can't talk to your relatives or friends, it also helps if you talk to strangers. There has been studies on this also. Like if you talk to the cashier or the vegetable vendor who's coming to your place to sell vegetables, if you talk to your maid. you just need a human interaction it doesn't matter it needn't be your best friend or maybe one has gone through a breakup and feeling very lonely and feeling very down and whenever one looks at other couples they start feeling all the more lonely so you don't have to talk to that special person only or to your parents or to your best friend it can be any human communication and like mm. even the touch helps even if you touch yourself if, while sometimes the place it really helps sometimes the pet really helps if you have like a like a dog pet dog or a cat it really helps to have a pet i believe that some of the people who have dealt with loneliness in Should my life somehow i can't hear you i am saying that some people who have dealt loneliness about with loneliness in their lives often have a kind of recovered from it by having pets you know pet dogs or pet cats pets having pets also really help hai right? na with loneliness having a dog or a cat somehow shoyiti there is some problem in the connection i can't hear you i am speaking can Shall you hear I me now can join can can i can you hear me now is it better can you hear me yes, i can hear you now somehow i just couldn't hear you last no, that is fine i was saying that having a pet also sometimes helps helps a lot in loneliness having a cat or a dog or some pet yes. sometimes you might technically you are not alone if you are with a pet technically yes, you're not alone yeah. when you are a pet yeah but i am talking about loneliness but even if you are like you know feeling lonely even if yeah. you don't have human company having a pet helps if you're a, like animal lover you can always get a pet and having any company per se helps and pets are very very therapeutic we've seen children with autism who have had like a lot of issues they are very destructive aggressive they have calmed down in the presence of so similarly for exactly. clients with depression clients with loneliness pets can do wonders okay yeah that is i completely agree with so these are the few things i wanted to talk about because loneliness in general depends from person to person how much and to what extent one person is feeling lonely whether the person is feeling lonely till the extent of becoming self destructive or doing something harmful that also has to be taken in consideration but a lot of my viewers ask that what do we do if we feel lonely i what i usually do when i feel lonely is i try to concentrate on something which will completely divert my mind 
like you know either uh, start watching something which i really like and nowadays everything has become virtual so you know not on social media not on facebook or instagram but something on tv something on netflix a movie or something listening to some really high power music you know these things kind of divert by once you divert your mind you start feeling a little less lonely you start concentrating on the sad part of it and start focusing on things which are there you know utilization of resources because you know more and more you deal with mental problems you start uh, you know understanding ways how to deal with them as well how to cope with those issues which you are practically dealing with every day so that is also very important i feel but thank you so much uh, joyita ji for joining me on this live and uh, for you know helping our viewers uh, at least get to know some idea about about a therapist uh, from a therapist point of view from a clinical psychologist point of view and uh, thank you viewers for watching us together on this live and i hope you had uh, got some information i will be doing more collabs with um, clinical psychologist joyita sai in the future and i hope that this video helps you if you like my content then please like share and subscribe uh, to my youtube channel and uh, thank you for watching us thank you joyita thank you thank you for calling me thank you so much